Going postal, I'm sure many of you out there have heard this term, but you might not know exactly where it came from. I'm Lamont at Large today. I am in Edmond, Oklahoma, and I'm gonna show you exactly where that term came from. Let's get going. What is there to say about Patrick Sherrill? Reading up on whatever little history that I can find online about Patrick Sherrill, uh, just a prototypical loner, uh, this guy originally as a child uh, growing up here in Oklahoma was always socially inept. Uh, some of the other kids would kind of make fun of him. They would call him Crazy Pat. Later after graduating high school, he joined the Marines and he actually served in the Marines and had an honorable discharge. In my personal opinion, uh, this was a man that needed some kind of a strict uh, regimen, uh, a very disciplined environment, and that's what the military offers. In hindsight, this man should have just stayed in the military for as long as he could until he retired. This was not a man that needed to be out on the streets uh, in society. Uh, the perfect place for him would have been in the Marine Corps, giving him that very structured lifestyle that he really really needed somewhere in the springtime of 1985 uh, patrick sherrill had gotten the job at the postal service here in edmond oklahoma and when you start a new job in particular a government job you're always going to be at the uh, bottom rung of the ladder the bottom of the totem pole uh, what have you so he worked at this post office for about 16 months uh, he was a letter carrier but i guess you would call it a reserve carrier he would basically be the fill-in postman uh, he would work people's day days off uh, if somebody requested time off uh, he would be uh, the one to fill in their spot uh, i'm sure if somebody called in sick and he was sleeping they would call him and say hey man can you come fill in uh, gary's spot or what have you now you're gonna get mixed um, opinions and information uh, in regards to uh, Patrick's work ethic. It probably wasn't the best. Um, he had very few friends uh, that he got along with at the post office. Uh, he was looked upon as a socially quiet guy kept to himself. Uh, he loved guns. Uh, he, he would call himself a small arms expert. After getting out of the Marine Corps with that honorable discharge, he was in the Oklahoma uh, National Guard for a little while before ending up getting this job at the post office here down the street. So not a very popular guy by any means. Now, one guy would probably say that he was a good worker. If you called, uh, he would show up for work. But if you asked his supervisors, uh, they would say no. Uh, there's been... Uh, times where he was admonished, uh, reprimanded. I don't know if there's any talk of him having been uh, disciplined in terms of uh, being suspended, but there was complaints from people in the routes that he worked uh, about uh, misdirected mail, uh, them not getting the mail at all. Just a unsatisfactory performance done by Patrick Sherrill. And he had been called in quite a few times into the supervisor's office uh, about his uh, work ethic and the day before the shooting that took place on august 20th 1986 uh he had been you know invited in the uh supervisor's office to talk about again yet again his work ethic. now i don't really know when they told him to come into their office if he was gonna get fired if he was gonna get suspended Whatever the talk that they had between those two supervisors and Patrick Sherrill was not good at all. Uh, he was sent home and that night, Patrick Sherrill, having been bullied practically all of his life, always being called weird, probably that time in the Marines, there's a reason why he didn't want to stay there and retire. I'm sure you had uh, fellow Marines, you know, razzing him and bullying him and making fun of him and you had people at his uh, job doing the same now before he went home 
that day there was a woman don't know her name but i guess you could say that they got along pretty well and he probably felt that she treated him kindly so just before he leaves and jumps in his car to go back home by the way home was where he lived with his mother i think she was sick that's probably why he was living with her but you know you got the prototypical 40 mid 40s guy still living with her mother it's always a bad scene at the end of the day unless the mother's sick it's always kind of an odd thing anyways so he tells this woman that's been kind to him uh, for the time that he's been working at this post office he says hey do you uh, go to work tomorrow Are you working tomorrow and she says yeah I am and he says it's probably be a good idea if you don't show up for work August 20th 1986 Patrick Sherrill is supposed to be at work normally at 7 a.m. probably wakes up around 5 30 he gets here at 6 45 in his mail carrier bag is two semi-automatic 45 caliber pistols and a 22 caliber revolver he goes to the facility and he's probably looking for those two supervisors that he felt did him wrong and as soon as he gets here and he sees somebody that he felt belittled him that talked down to him that gave him a nasty look he pulls out those guns and just starts shooting guns ablaze and for the next 15 minutes or so uh a uh basically uh, a, a true uh real life horror story was taking place uh, at this post office right here and in total he killed 14 people and wounded six this memorial fountain was made for the victims who died that day patricia ann chambers judy stephen denny richard esser Patricia Gabbard, Joanna Ruth Gregert, Patty Jean Husband, Betty Ann Jared, William Miller, Thomas Shader, Patty Welch, Kenneth Morey, Leroy Phillips, Jerry Pyle, and Paul Rockney. All those people brutally shot to death and cut down by one madman lunatic 44 year old socially inept loser Patrick Sherrill this is where the term going postal all started right here at this very facility This is the inside of the post office. Today's a holiday, so it's closed right now. But uh, this is the building where the carnage took place and it's very echoey in here right now. So I can only imagine how loud those gunshots were. And all the times he was firing over and over and over again, who knows how many shots were fired. And you could just imagine hearing the people scream, just running for their lives in absolute terror. Behind those boxes where the mail sorters put your mail in there, they were all running for their lives right behind these very walls. If you think that was the first postal shooting that ever took place in our nation's history, you would be incorrect. No, the first postal shooting took place on August 13th, 1970 in Los Angeles, California, when 41-year-old Alfred Kellum showed up to work. He was acting a little weird. His boss, 54-year-old postal supervisor, Harry Sendro, says, hmm... You're acting a little weird. I think you're drunk. And Alfred says, no, I'm not. And Harry says, yes, you are. You are drunk. 
go home. You're done for the day. So he goes home, retrieves a handgun, shows up back to work, and shoots and kills his boss. Then he goes back home where the police find him and they arrest him, charge him with the murder. And yes, indeed, he was drunk. Also in January, January the 30th of 2006, Jennifer San Marco showed up to a postal service center where she used to work at in Goleta, California, which is about 15 minutes north of Santa Barbara proper, where she shot and killed six of her former employees or employers, what have you. I believe in that case, that is the largest mass shooting to ever be committed by a female in US history. Unless you want to count the San Bernardino shooting where uh, Saeed Rizwan Farouk and his uh, crazy nutcase wife, Tashfin Malik, went into the Inland Regional Justice Center in San Bernardino, California, and shot and killed 14 people and uh, wounding dozens and dozens of others uh, during a Christmas party. Uh, that would have been uh, called a terrorist attack. And all together, 11 different shootings, 35 people killed. Now, the uh, Postal Service wants to do away with the term going postal because it was kind of like a running joke in the uh, 90s, you know. I mean, hell, there's even a business uh, not too far from here called Going Postal. It's a mail uh, center thing where you go mail stuff like a UPS store. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You got a guy with a bad brain who always, you know, pretty much kept to himself. I mean, his main hobby was uh, ham radios. He would talk to other people on ham radios. And uh, one day woke up and uh, absolutely uh, went bonkers. A crazy world we live in uh, where you go to work one day and uh, your family never sees you again. And we've had plenty of uh, workplace violence uh, within the last five years. This is the grave of the murderer 14 times over. This is Patrick Sherrill. And if you look, he's buried really next to nobody. I mean, there's people right there, but he has his whole row practically to himself. No flowers, no nothing. Just him and some dirt. And the proper place where he can no longer hurt anybody. Payable on death is what I say. By the time the police were able to get to him, he was already dead. He put the gun to his forehead and pulled the trigger. And other than the victims of this massacre, I feel bad, felt bad for his mother because his mother was older and she was ailing and he you know, was there to take care of her and he left her all alone to commit this atrocious uh, crime. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I got to hit the road. By the way, um, I'm in Watonga, Oklahoma. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And there's a man, if you see right over there, you probably can't see it unless I zoom. If you see those uh, structures over, over there, uh, there is a cemetery on the other side of those structures. And over there, I did a video of a despicable monster human being. If you want to see that video, maybe you haven't seen it before. I did it a couple years ago. I'll put it in the link. 
in the description box below. Check that video out. That's another scumbag that is exactly where he belongs. As a matter of fact, I'm probably just gonna go over there right now just to go look at his grave and then start heading west back towards Texas, all over the place, guys. Always, always, always at the scene of the crime. Live, but not live, but still alive by the grace of God. I am Lamont at large, coming to you from the IOOF Cemetery here in Watonga, Oklahoma. I will see you on the next vlog. I hope to see you on the next vlog. Be good, y'all. Peace out.